The Earth is also called the blue planet. But why does it appear blue? This question has been a matter of debate for a long time. Philosophers have been discussing this and the argument could also be found in many ancient stories. From the ancient India where the sunlight is depicted as seven different rays to ancient Egyptian civilization where the people worshiped the sky goddess Nut. Greek philosopher Aristotle was the first to ask why the sky was blue. He speculated that the color is the result of an interaction between the air and deep space. This perspective became the basis for the future thinkers, like the celebrated Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci's experiments gave him a perspective towards the scattering of air molecules for the abundance of the blue color. As time progressed, Sir Isaac Newton began a series of experiments and he rightly concluded that the clear white light is composed of seven colors. Light was then compared to waves and different colors of light have different wavelengths. Lord Rayleigh correctly theorized how light scatters when the sunlight enters the Earth's atmosphere. The atmosphere then diffuses the sunlight. He also theorized that the blue color of the sea was also because of the reflection of the sunlight. But one scientist from India was not accepting of this theory. Educated entirely in India, Siviraman's work on acoustic and percussions was well known to the Western world. His article, Newton's Ring in Polarized Light, was published in the Nature's Magazine in 1907. The first for IACS. He was invited to give a lecture at Oxford in 1921. Such was his reputation that his hosts were J.G. Thompson and Lord Rutherford. On his return journey aboard the SS Narakunda in September 1921, he observed the blue color of the Mediterranean Sea. Rayleigh was right about the blue color of the sky. Rayleigh's hypothesis of the sea reflecting the light and hence the sky appearing to be blue was generally accepted as correct. On this journey itself, he started writing an article, The Color of the Sea, to send it to the Nature magazine later. Raman observed the sea without the influence of sunlight using a Nicole prism and he found out that the sea was more blue than he expected. After discovering the nature of light scattering, Raman focused on the principle behind this phenomenon. The scattering experiments explained, no matter what scattering medium is used, the medium will always produce polarized light within its color spectrum. K. S. Krishnan, a new research associate, was conducting the experiments with C. V. Raman. They concluded their modified scattering spectra in February 1928. For this discovery, C. V. Raman was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1930. The Raman effect has revolutionized the world of science and it has led to several other discoveries and inventions 
in the future and it will continue to do so in the coming centuries